Next on deck with Tim Black. Let's be very clear. <laughs> yeah. A Tulsi Gabbard nomination is yeah. a pro-war nomination yes. globally. At, Point blank, period. As is uh, Donald Trump as president of the... What we have here, thank you very much, AOC, for proving my point. You suck. That was horrible. Being AOC. And we haven't even gotten to Tulsi Gabbard potentially having... And we haven't even gotten to Tulsi Gabbard potentially having access to national security information. And Russia loves it. Loves her. And I actually think almost more than Matt Gates, Tulsi Gabbard's appointment is devastating. And Tulsi Gabbard's nomination, as much as she says that she's an anti-war person, she's not. Yeah. She supports very pro-war individuals. Including in- You mean like Kamala Harris? <laughs> you mean like Kamala Harris, right? You said pro-war, she supports pro-war people, right? Or it could be Kamala Harris herself, who you also supported. Folks, I want you to, I want you to bear witness. Listen to what she says, devastated. You know what I'm saying? She said it like she was going to say something more that was actually going to explain what was so devastating. But she doesn't. She just uses an over-the-top, you know, descriptor of Tulsi Gabbard, but backs it up with absolutely nothing. She just says it. It's a smear. It's a disgusting smear with no teeth. One more time, guys. Listen to her. Gates loves her. And I actually think almost more than Matt Gates, Tulsi Gabbard's appointment yeah. is devastating. She like took a beat as if what she's about to say is gonna be, you know, something very strong that you don't want to miss. Tulsi Gabbard is devastating. Okay, she's devastating. It's devastating that she okay, why? And Tulsi Gabbard's nomination, as much as she says that she's an anti-war person, she's not. Yeah. Okay, why? She supports very pro-war individuals. Including in Syria. And let's be very clear, (laughs) a Tulsi Gabbard nomination is a pro-war nomination globally. Point blank, period. As is uh, Donald Trump as president of the... What we have here... What we have here, thank you very much, AOC, for proving my point. You suck. That was horrible. It told us nothing, and it is an indictment on your own credibility. And there are people that are saying that Tulsi Gabbard uh, will be appointed, and we'll see what happens, but that's not the point. The point is, people are saying that AOC may run for president, and I think that would be great. Yeah, because I'd love to see the Democratic Party go away. And I think if you run AOC, it's like you're begging for your party to die. You're doing everything except put cyanide in the coke. Yeah. AOC is a bunch of talking points. Yeah. AOC is talking points and nothing else. Talking points, Latina. That's it. That's all you get. There's nothing else there, man. Tell people say Tim Black, you know, she went down to Jamal Bowman's campaign and really stunk it up. You haven't heard her help anyone except herself. When she shows up, she makes things worse because everyone sees through her at this point. There's nothing redeemable about her. In my opinion, man, there was a bright light when she first started, but that was because of the media focus that people were holding her up and she was using talking points from Bernie. She was just saying whatever Bernie... Everybody was repeating what Bernie said, and it was a wave at the time. If you could jump on the Bernie train, you look good. But at the end of the day, when it's time to stand on your own, none of them can stand on their own, especially that AOC. Hell, Bernie couldn't stand on Bernie's own. Now when he really can't go up against those people by itself... Which is sad, because there's no reason why Bernie couldn't have been as effective as Trump. Bernie should have been to the to the Democrats when Trump was to the Republicans. 
but Bernie played ball. Get it? That's why there has been no indictments to Bernie. That's why they're not in Bernie. He's, he's, he's not on the hot seat because he backed off. He played ball. They did come at him for a minute. And people remember, they came at him and had an investigation into his wife, something about some properties or some school loans or something. I forget exactly what it was. But if you recall, there was a moment in time they were coming for Bernie's ass. And Bernie was like, oh, no, oh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, right around that time, that's when AOC was really taking off. I believe anybody that becomes a threat to the Democratic Party, things will happen negatively to them. I'm not saying that AOC hasn't faced her set of challenges. I just felt that there was go there was a window she had where she could lead something. But that takes a certain kind of person, man. You got to already have made up in your mind that you don't want anything else. Yeah, see, when you're young, you want stuff. And I guess when you're old, you want stuff too. It's like an in-between spot when you're not young and you're not old. You want stuff, but you don't want stuff and you don't need stuff. You know, like it's kind of, yeah, so somewhere between being 30, I guess that's what AOC is, and being 80. The, mis the midpoint is 50. I think when you're 50, you got a shot. Anyway, the point is this, guys. AOC proves in this that she doesn't know anything to say negative about Tulsi Gabbard, except I was told to say negative things about Tulsi Gabbard. So she went out there and she said negative things. She had no substance under it, nothing to undergird it, nothing to support it, nothing to parallel park her smear. So she ran over the curb and bit the rim. And that's a sad thing. That's a sad thing to consider, consider the fact that uh, people talk about her career, the AOC trajectory. It's going downward. That's what it's going. She's becoming obscure. I mean, Jasmine Crockett came in and started making more noise. She talked louder. She, she was willing to shield harder. A time to shield. She put out a new record called I'm, You Best to Chill. You Best to Shield. Yeah, the Shield Chronicles. She'll kill. All right, that's it. Um, let me know what you think of the conversation about AOC. Uh, it's yeah, it's pathetic. In fact, all the conversation guys surrounding Trump's appointments, all of them are kind of pathetic. You know what I'm saying? Hey, really think about it. I said this last segment, and I guess we're going to set some coverage some of that tonight. Look, guys. I can't remember half the people that were in the uh, Biden administration. But know this. A lot of them stuck up the room. You just didn't know who they were. Because they haven't been demonized by the media. Because no one demonizes Democrats like that. Because why? Because for the most part. 90% of the time, when the corporate media covers Congress people from the Democratic side, it's positive. That's just, that's just the way it's been. Maybe things may change a little bit. I'm getting signs that maybe things may be altered a little bit this time for Trump. But I don't know, man. The jury's still out. I never, no one answered my question when I said, what was so impressive about Pete Buttigieg? No one said anything. I didn't get a single email of anybody going, but Tim, he was an excellent uh, transportation secretary. He had no experience. He didn't know shit. He's another word salad guy with stolen valor. Nothing. But the Democrats loved him anyway. Why can't Trump have his people that are horrible? I'm not even saying these people are horrible, but what I'm saying is, you know, who cares? 